Hello, today we talk about annotations and why you need it and we look about uh, annotation processing and creating some custom annotation and your goal is to accomplish the task free in your task you need to create those annotations and basically when you start in Java you need to understand how to implement first and then implement those <coughs> annotation processors and for example we have the uh, plain java object uh, some simple example and we creating simple project for java app without any system uh, build tool grade or maven and we open a new window basically annotation it's really similar to uh, comments like when you're commenting, you're able to write some stuff here. And uh, if you have the, uh, some annotations, annotations, it's really similar, but it has some powerful uh, power uh, to use for code generation or code, uh, your code validation for compiler information like to suppress warnings or to show errors and etc. And basically, if you would like to use annotations in Java Docs, you also see some stuff when you use in Java Docs, able to use uh, some annotations to mark, like, um, for example, author Marius, for example. My name is Marius and uh, I would like to create Java doc with my name Marius. And when generating, you generating and displaying as an author. And also there is a lot of uh, other stuff uh, with those do Java docs uh, parameters. Because when you open, for example, any class like already implemented in Java JDK, uh, you find some annotations added to some methods and you also find uh, annotations added to Java docs. Uh, we switching off uh, reader mode and as you see here you see the link for example it's links to another class when you're using annotation and code and able to see where to look at what while you return and basically when you write it like this you automatically get uh, java docs and when you calling oh dot oh sorry it's wrong scope <coughs> when you calling like this for example, equals control q and you automatically get uh, docs, which is uh, when you annotate your uh, method, for example, with param at, at return, it shows automatically that standard output, like in different ID is different, but you will see that uh, messages and etc. And when you're generating the Java docs, you automatically generates uh, structurize uh, Java documentation. Uh, basically, uh, those annotations, it's really it's to mark some data and to write some texts and to use it, for, for example, for Java docs. And also, there is the next level, which is highest level, when you able to use it and make it uh, functional functional uh, annotations. Uh, when you're creating a new Java class, you're able to choose the annotation. And basically, we need to annotate our classes. For example, author. I'm creating annotation author. Instead of interface, we adding add symbol uh, before or prefix for interface and it automatically will be uh, the annotation here. 
In annotation, it's really straightforward uh, to create those methods. It's really simple to inter similar to interface. Uh, you creating like return value because you're not able to create void. For example, uh, string name, and you leave like this. And now, when you moving to the any class, uh, sorry. Uh, for example, we creating person class, and we creating uh, some field private and age private string name. For example, we have the properties. We generate our constructor. Uh, we generate, for example, uh, getter and setters, and we also generate uh, to string method. Uh, I switch view mode to presentation mode, smaller one, and we see to this example. We have basic, basic Pojo class, and when you have created author, uh, author uh, annotation, you're able to edit author here, and you should say the name for the author. For example, Marius. Oh, sorry. You need to call uh, to call that variable name is here, and say like name equals Maris. And now you able to read this notation during the uh, different uh, different time. Basically, uh, I need to open. Uh, the annotation, there is some different types. And you're able to say that retention policy by default is source. And if you leave it a retention policy for an annotation like source, uh, this annotation will be added to your source code. Uh, if you picking the class, you using this annotation only during the compilation process. If you need to do something with that annotation or annotated code, uh, you just uh, say that retention policy is runtime. For example, uh, how to make this uh, different policies, be able to add another annotation between here, retention and retention policy uh, class, runtime and source. For example, runtime, and basically it's constant too. And when you see here, you during runtime able to read that notation. Uh, if your goal not to generate the code, it's uh, just to read it that notation during the runtime. You using runtime, and there is three options only. And basically, main goal for annotations to display some warnings. Uh, you able uh, to generate some code. For example, you would like you would like to generate some classes. I will show some example how to generate, and later I did added those examples to uh, my Git, Git repository, and be able to download and to see how it works and uh, basically runtime it's when you need to do some tasks uh, during runtime basically it's annotation it's metadata about data it's like uh, it's like metadata for your classes or for your code you never would like to create annotations which is uh, make uh, your program business logic or to to make some logic inside here or to add some sensitive data. You can't use sensitive data or make it only your code using only annotations. Because that annotation is really, uh, for example, for a testing purpose, you're able to use the test annotation to to see that you need to test this um, method 
for code generation, like you need to generate getters and setters, uh, you're you able to add it, uh, some library like Lombok, which is, um, helps you uh, generate some getter setters instead of writing that much lines. Uh, you're able to use custom an annotation processors or to create your own annotation processor. And now when we have author annotation, you're not able to say which place I'm adding that. I'm able here, add it, and here. I'm able add it here. And by default, we're able to use that annotation anywhere. Uh, how to control this? Uh, you're able to make a target. Another important and uh, element type, for example, method. You say that you need to annotate only the methods. Uh, when we go to the here, you will see we able to add it only to method, not constructor, not field, not class. If you need uh, to change it and add it more, you're able to make the array if you need it. For example, element method, element type. Type will be the class scope. And as you see, class is now working. If you don't need to add that uh, name, you're able to add a default name. For example, here writing default. Uh, guest and instead of this you just uh, deleting here that name and the default name you don't need those brackets will be the guest oh sorry I'm deleted some fields um, yeah be able to do like this and I able to add it here author, author, and like this. We're just making some author uh, annotations. And if I, if I say that here it's not inherited annotation, because you're able to make that your inherited annotation, uh, when you have some classes and you have the parent class and you need that other child classes to inherit all that annotations, be able to mark as inherited also. And pretty much it here, you're able to use it different types like in uh, array if you need it. Uh, I forget how to make this array works. Um, default. Or oh, maybe need here. Sorry, uh, I need to look it here. String default class string array o should work. Should work like this. Uh, yeah, uh, when you creating the array, you creating the array. This, if you need default, you able to make default values like this and basically you're able to edit any D default I, I leave that number uh, only this type of methods here and when you have default uh, you don't need to write those fields and in author I able to use array. If I would like to use array, I able to edit array equals, for example, my custom array. Yeah. And basically those annotations helps to generate code or uh, is, as you know, there is some REST API to show the path to your uh, endpoint calls and etc. like it's really simple uh, stuff we're able to do here and basically it's 
uh, those custom processor processors usage is for uh, library creation or API framework creation or just code generation or compiler validation code. If you have runtime checks, you're able to uh, read your annotations. And basically, you're able to mark for different uh, uh, fields like method package where we're able to annotate with a target uh, annotation and you're able to make uh, inherited annotations and when you're inheriting, you're inheriting that annotation from the parent class. Um, and now I would like to read it that annotation using the Java re reflection. Uh, it helps to read uh, private methods or doesn't matter which type of methods. Uh, if you need to get some data, for example. And I try to copy this one example and we try to see is it possible to read it, uh, our created annotation. I need to import the class Java reflection method and uh, it's not meta class, it's person class. Person class get methods, basically read all methods from the our uh, person class and add it to array. And now we just reading all methods and try to check is our offer uh, annotation is added. Uh, basically, we able to use author and annotation class, author, annotation, and here we need to read it our name. And just name. And as you see, there is some methods. Of course, you're able to make any type, any type of algorithm which with your data, and basically guest, Marius, Marius, guest. And as you see here, we found guest, Marius. Oh, we we read methods. Sorry, <laughs> uh, for methods we have uh, Marius, guest, guest and Maris, yeah, two Maris and one, two guests, because two guests and two Maris. And we also able to read all an array, for example, for um, our array was integer, for int i, ta dot array, for example, yeah. And just printing our i. Just printing array. And as you see, we just printed out our arrays four times because we have four annotations. Yeah. And basically, you're able to use that information for any purpose. And main goal for annotation is to. Uh, help or reduce boilerplate code or just to use it like this. Uh, here is a basic approach where you using annotations, like you're creating your custom annotation and you able to read it during runtime. It's really easy to use it, those annotations. If I create a new project using, for example, Gradle project, just creating for to show uh, when I using the custom processor. Uh, for example, we have Lombok library, which is reducing our uh, reducing our boilerplate uh, Lombok Java Gradle. I just need a link. And we just copy dependencies. 
Gradle without a plugin. Okay, maybe it, it works. Uh, test annotation processor, and basically, if you don't have the annotation processor, uh, uh, Lombok will give you that. And um, if you need to activate in IntelliJ IDEA the processor, first you need to refresh and download dependencies. Next, you need to go to the settings and find annotation processor. Processor. Enable annotation processing and you're just hitting OK. And now our project Lombok should work like we intended. We create a main class, a main method, and we creating, for example, same uh, person class using Lombok. And private int age, private string name. Instead of uh, generating and creating those constructors, you're able to make that work in single annotation. At data, basically generates all uh, getters and setters for your properties. And you're able to make the constructor, for example, all args constructor, uh, all or no args constructor also if you need it, and so on. Basically, we using custom annotation processor, which is written by a Lombok team, and uh, you are able to use it person class, as we see here, new person, uh, generating, for example, get age, as you see, by set age, like p dot uh, get name. Uh, you're able to create person with all arcs, like Peter, doesn't matter, new person, and we're able to pass age and name, Peter. Basically, you get that generation using that custom uh, annotation processor here. Uh, it's really powerful stuff, annotation processing, it's really good stuff. And I will show the example how to create your own uh, processors. And those examples will be added to the video description also. And here, as you see, we just writing a few lines and I, we will get the same functionality as we saw in our example with normal code, when you need to write a lot of boilerplate and if you make some changes, you need to do a lot of uh, changes in your code also. And if you're using Lombok, it's really reduced the boilerplate code. And basically, as you see, you create, uh, you're able to create your own uh, annotations and uh, use to read it during runtime to do some stuff. Uh, you're able to use uh, already created some annotation processors and use like frameworks libraries a lot of a lot of stuff already created for uh, for android for java for like for, for java uh, libraries frameworks apis and etc using basically a lot of uh, annotations custom annotation processors and annotation processors were, was introduced i think that in java fifth version and it's really not not so new stuff but it's really powerful and used everywhere and after this i need open custom annotation processor project and here it's a bit uh, harder to understand how to create of course when we have created some processor we're able to publish this later or something. Here is uh, just only for testing purpose, I will show you. You're creating basically Maven project or Gradle project or any different project and you're adding some sub modules. 
Uh, first module inside this project, uh, we have annotation processing. For annotation processing, basically, uh, there is hardest part when you needed to create, uh, I'm sorry, uh, meta inf and add services library, and that you need to add Java X annotation processing, etc. Instead of this hard part, you're able to add it uh, some Google dependency to POM file, or if Gradle build Gradle file, uh, POM XML, you're able to add it uh, Google auto service library. Uh, this automatically creates uh, all needed files to create your custom annotation process. Where to find it? You're able to go to mavenrepository.com and write uh, auto service. It's not a car uh, service, but it's auto service, as you see here, auto service processor. And here you'll find the versions and you're able to download Maven, Gradle and other build tools. Just copy this dependency and add it, add it to your project. I will close this now and we open it, uh, our dependency list. And here you just added the dependency and you also needed added properties for uh, dependence also depends on your version you're using here. Auto service version RC4 or 7 if we download and UTF8 also it's needed for project. Uh, packaging should be jar and other stuff if you need it you're able to add it compile version and etc for Java. And basically for, uh, for our processor creation, we have some setter processor. And here you need what to do here. You need to add annotation support version, like which type of processor will be the 8th Java, 11th, 5th, 6th, or any other version. Uh, supported annotation types, if using uh, some annotation, for example, setter, you're creating only the single setter annotation. Uh, after this, to help to create generate uh, needed files, you added at auto service, it's from Google library processor class. That means here is a processor class and it automatically def uh, generates meta inf uh, uh, catalog or directory with needed uh, files and adding customer processor link. And basically those annotations, that's it for here. And you then create your own custom class and extending abstract processor. And in our case, we're using a messenger. Not messenger, but messenger. Uh, messenger helps to display the uh, problems to the console, able to have different like warnings and, and etc. You have some uh, messenger, and you automatically need to override the method which is called process. You will get some uh, annotations, and you will get around NV or environment stuff which helps you to work with your annotations and here we just creating sets of empty elements uh, getting it's really similar similar when you reading reflection library getting uh, methods array here it's similar uh, with round and we get elements annotated with setter class Basically, which classes is annotated, we just getting those as a set. No repeated uh, methods. And here we just uh, reading our annotated elements. We uh, get element kind, element kind is method. 
and we check the method. We creating custom methods to check some information. Here is basically business logic or our implementation for checking those annotated methods. And here, as you see, we have our check method. We picking the executable element because we need it. Uh, pass it uh, some element and we get some simple name uh, simple name is our method name here like this check method this simple method name we getting this name and we try to check it with basic string methods if not name starts with set that's uh, that mean that our method is uh, not setter because we need to generate setters or to check uh, not generate sorry uh, we need to check it here is a setter method or not setter method and for example we check it and if it's some wrong we are able to create print error method which is comes from diagnostic kind error and you're printing some message and you also check and give method length is uh, name length is uh, less than three that means it's not setter because setter have all the time have some set before and that means uh, more than just a set if character is lower case at third position for example you said set e that means here is not setter because setter always starts with uppercase and for that reason you printing something and other you also printing some stuff and in init uh, method overriding you just need to uh, initialize your messenger we created here message object process and we get messenger you're just initializing this instance to working with your custom errors basically our uh, annotation processor goal is to validate our uh, annotated methods with setter and say is it setter or not setter and our annotation is really simple we using uh, retention policy source we using target method and we have marker interface uh, setter we don't need any fields inside here because we don't need any properties and when you creating this basically in IntelliJ it's really good stuff when you able view tool windows and maven here you will find your both uh, modules and our first goal go to life cycle clean project um, it's okay and we compiling try to compile our processor after you compiling processor it's everything fine you will find the target classes and oh there is no uh, our jar file generated by default you also need to pick a task as a package package our jar file and now you see our annotation after, after compilation it's a generated annotation processing jar file and when you have this file you need to click ctrl alt s and to find annotations uh, annotation processor here and when you find this you need to add processor path of course you're able to configure using only maven or gradle but i will show how to using intellij you're able to use like this and uh, you're just adding the path to your annotation processor compiled jar file basically when you're using dependencies you download for, from internet but here we're using local custom annotation processor 
and in annotation processor you need to pick uh, this path and hit OK. After you picking this, you start able to testing our uh, annotation user uh, package or module. You will find only the single class, which is only uh, added setter methods. As you see here, setter, setter, and setter. And as you see, a lot of different types to check our uh, setter methods. And now, when you go to annotation user, we cleaning our project. See, it's everything empty. And we try to compile. We don't need a main. We just try to compile our code. And you will get some problems. If you need the inspections in real time, you're able to configure it. But I'm not uh, sure how to do this because you need to custom uh, inspections and uh, different uh, compilers, different IDEs uh, shows uh, you need to configure in different way. Basically, we got this during the compiling. And you here get person, setter name must start with set. Here we got get. Uh, start with set. We got get. Setter method uh, only contains single method parameter. Setter method only contains single method parameter. Yeah, uh, we don't have any parameter. If you add it here parameter, and now we try to run it, you will see our problem gone when we fix it here. Um, of course, when we add it like this, you will get a problem because uh, here it's not the same. But when you're writing your custom annotation processor, you're able to uh, check this line and then try to compare if, if the same uh, parameter added here also. But here it's some example how to use a custom processor. Uh, when you need to check some stuff, you're able to create your own processors and or APIs to work with that. Uh, here, as you see, the problems. Uh, here is a first example. Now I am added also the second example inside that uh, um, our in my own uh, Git repository, but I will share later in the video description. Uh, we find a builder processor. I'm just copy this one and after we copy this one, copy, uh, we adding to the processor our code. And we find our uh, also another annotation. And we pasting, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, we pasting that builder property annotation. Basically, there is nothing that interesting. Builder property also empty annotation without any parameters. We deleting this setter, delete, and we need to change name, a rename file. Yeah. Why well, it's not working? Missing package. Okay, we just setting package. Yeah, and basically the difference uh, before was compiler problem checking. Or oh, here we got uh, file generation. Of course, there is also custom processors, 
to generate um, there are some custom libraries which is able like java poet or some different libraries help to generate that code of classes be able to use it also those or just creating from scratch uh, but when you start working working with annotation processors you will find a lot of information with other libraries when you generating from templates for example velocity or some template engines you are able to use it also basically everything the same we source version annotation type processor using the same google uh, stuff easier to generate and here we using some for example list element setters annotation methods get true other methods annotations get false other method for each if setters empty and basically we reading some uh, some some stuff from our uh, code from our code where we using this annotation uh, builder property and the main goal is to create the builder uh, builder pattern or object creation using the builder design pattern uh, basically we're creating the generation of builder uh, design pattern without writing any code just annotating code and here the basic logic when you write builder file you're creating a, a java file and to create the builder for our case like we're using a simple printer writer package name we writing public class private object new simple class builder to name and etc there is some libraries as I mentioned is Poet, Java Poet or other libraries which is helps to write your templates in easier way instead of uh, print, uh, print writer. As you see here we create Java file object, process and we get filler, create source file, builder class name. Uh, here creating our Java file. Uh, our goal is to compile this processor for file generation and we go here clean first uh, compile and package uh, when you packaging it will be everything fine because we have the same stuff Oh, sorry, annotation processing. As you see here, we got our jar file. Now we need to use our example in Java person, but instead of person, we just copy the code from example. Annotation uh, user source main annotation person. Yeah, we need to create uh, person class which added some annotations like builder property just adding here and we need to import this and as you see we importing our processor from that uh, uh, jar file and this builder property our empty as you see builder property but have uh, annotation processor already created for file generation and what's happening now when we working we need go to our uh, annotation user clean first project here see it's empty I'm just here and when you open it's empty annotation user project and we just compiling project Oh, what's happening here? Could not find symbol. What the hell? Sorry, a bit. Glasses, Maven status.
using 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 problems could not find symbol what's going on here maybe we try to copy this oh, sorry 